Just pray in your, inside of you if you want, or if you want to pray out loud. Let's pray for the salvation of the Muslims. Let's pray for our church to wake up. Let's pray that we know that we are here in this world that Jesus did not promise us just to have nice life. That Jesus told us in the world we're going to have persecution. And he told us that we have to trust that he overcome the world. He did overcome. We are not to be afraid. I pray, Lord, against any fear that we have in our hearts, Lord. I pray that you give us the courage, Lord, to do our job, Lord Jesus. You want us to conquer, Lord Jesus. You want us to go out into the streets. You want us to preach the gospel. You want us to live a victorious life, Lord Jesus. Victory in you, Lord, because of the work that you put, you did in the cross, Lord. You took the burden in the cross, Lord. You paid it all in full, Lord Jesus. I pray for each one of us, Lord. I pray that you may direct us, Lord. Lead us by your Holy Spirit. Lead us by the Holy Spirit that we may Reach out to those that we've been neglecting for years, Lord. I pray, Lord, that when you humble with the system and our doors. Yeah, that's uh, Pastor George Syag in there. And what you're just seeing is uh, this is the closing prayer of uh, a lot of training. George um, is getting Christians together, training them to evangelize Muslims. Now, let me give you a little background. Um, George comes from the Sudan. His uh, family is a family of Arab Christians who originally lived in Syria. They left Syria in the early 1900s to escape persecution, and uh, they moved to the Sudan. And if you know anything about what happened uh, in the past century in Sudan, you had around 2.5 million Christians killed. So George came to the United States. And at first, he worked in a gas station. And after that, he had a variety of, of other jobs. And eventually, he managed to uh, rent a small place for an Arabic Christian education center, basically a place that distributed Christian materials. And he slept in that store with his son. He would sleep right there on the floor of the store. And he did that um, for a while until a Christian family opened their home to him. And uh, if you uh, don't know that uh, who George is, uh, he's doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. You don't normally see him, but he's, uh, he's active behind the scenes. Uh, when, when Nabil and I were going to Dearborn, we were going to Dearborn because George was having us come out there to train uh, Christians, Christian uh, evangelists, um, how to respond to the objections of Muslims. So George would have us come out there, and uh, we would go out there, train them for, for a couple of days, and so on. But that's why Nabil and I uh, ended up uh, several times in Dearborn. Probably 20 of the debates um, I've ever done with Muslims were arranged by uh, George. The annual Our Strong Tower Conference um, where people get together and receive days of training is uh, arranged by George. And, but what he, what he mainly does is every week he goes out to mosques with a team of Christians that he trains. And he uh, talks to the Muslims as they leave, as they uh, head out, as they go to their cars, as they go home. And he offers them copies of uh, the gospel in English or Arabic or whatever language um, that they speak. Uh, offers them uh, DVDs uh, that present the gospel or, or uh, offer uh, testimonies of former Muslims. Gives them tracts. And he regularly uh, gathers Christians together, uh, trains them, and then sends them out. And he goes across the country um, doing this. And... Um, the man has no concept of luxury or, or easy living. Uh, you may have remembered him from the Islamicize Me series when he actually uh, uh, he played uh, a Muslim who starts the whole 30-day uh, challenge off. And uh, it was funny because he, he didn't know what he was getting into when uh, I invited him to do that. He just, he just ag agreed to do it, and then he, uh, he joined us there. Um, but I, I flew him into Phoenix where we were recording. And I asked him if he wanted me to get him uh, a hotel room. 
And he said, no, I have a place to stay. And uh, so I said, okay, no problem. And a few hours went by, and I realized that, that this is a guy who, you know, will sleep on floors, will sleep anywhere. And so uh, there was a disturbance in the force. I was, I was thinking, that, let me ask that again. And so I asked him again. I said, you sure you don't want me to get you a hotel room? And he said, no, I have a place to stay. And I said, where are you going to stay? And he said, I'm going to stay in my, in my rental car. And so, it, it, you know, he, he didn't even want a hotel room. Just I, I got him a hotel room. But the point is, he, he, uh, he didn't even want it. And uh, George is one of the few guys um, that I know of who can just work me into the ground, and he's still going, right? I mean, a lot of you don't see what, what goes on in my life, but uh, I stay busy. I, I work myself uh, almost to death every day, and everything I do, I cannot keep up with that guy. Uh, I cannot stay with him for, I cannot stay out here with him for more than two or three days. I'm worried that I will have a heart attack. When I come out, uh, one of the things I tell him, you need to slow down. You need to slow down. I know you think you have to do it all right now, but you're not going to help a lot if you die next year of a heart attack. So this is the guy um, who's uh, bringing people together out here, training Christians, uh, bringing them materials, and he wants every Muslim coming out of every mosque in the country to have a copy of the Bible in Arabic, he wants, or, or whatever language they speak, to have tracts, to have materials. And so uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is, I don't, uh, I don't normally do this, but I think this is a, a really cool cause. Let me take you outside here. So I'm outside in the back of a, a place that's letting George uh, store some materials. Now, uh, over here, you see this tent? This is actually set up as showers because uh, they don't have showers and people needed a shower. This, he, this was set up for Christian high schoolers to come out here and be trained how to witness to Muslims and how to go to mosques and have discussions uh, with Muslims. Um, this is set up so that, so that the Christian high schoolers, while they stay here, while they sleep on the floor in this church, uh, could come out here and, uh, and take showers. So uh, that's what's going on. And he's been taking Christians, uh, even young Christians, to the mosques. And, the, the, you know, many of the mosques are very cool, and, and they'll invite Christians in to have discussions. And uh, he said he brought uh, this group of young Christians who'd been trained. Uh, I'd talked to these Christians before. These Christians had, had, uh, had read Nabil's books. And uh, he said the, the, the imam there was inviting them in, very excited to have Christians in there. And those Christians started challenging him, and he didn't know what to do. And so that's what's uh, going on out here. And uh, very, very cool uh, work. And uh, behind me, let's see here. These are cases, cases of Bibles, tracts, DVDs that uh, people donate to George because he's someone who will distribute them. Uh, here, uh, even outside there, case after case after case after case after case of materials. Um, tons of materials, and George has uh, teams of people who are willing to distribute them. Uh, why am I bringing all of this up? Well, there's a, uh, there's a pretty good reason. There's a, uh, a church, a men's group or something like that, uh, agreed to donate uh, a kind of trailer. Um, that George can use to bring people around and uh, like a camper trailer that he can hook to the back of a truck that he can use to bring materials and supplies and people around. Uh, problem is uh, George's vehicle was, uh, was in, a, in a wreck and so he has no means of getting this uh, trailer around. He has no means of uh, hooking this up and bringing it around. And so um, I thought if, if I'm gonna you know, help, try to raise something for anyone, it was a perfect guy uh, to do it. And so um, starting up a GoFundMe for him uh, not to live a, uh, an, an easy life. I don't think he'd like that. But uh, just to have a reliable truck that he can hook this trailer to and can bring these materials to Muslims who really, really need them. Um, so the, those of you out there who, um, who, who can, I mean, you know, enough people are going to watch this video that if a bunch of people kick in five or ten bucks, that's really going to add up quickly. But uh, I also know that there, there are those of you out there who, uh, you, know, you have careers that takes, up, that takes up a lot of your time. I know you stay busy, and that's good because uh, it's people like you who can support people like George and get him what he needs uh, to uh, take the gospel to Muslims across the country. Um, so, uh, be very excited if we could all chip in get this man a reliable vehicle. Um, every, every vehicle I've ever 
seen with George, unless it was a rental car. Every vehicle I've ever been in with him, uh, I was legitimately concerned that I was going to die in. Uh, there are always cars that don't seem to be worth more than a hundred or two hundred dollars. Um, he uh, many times has has shown up late because his car broke down and he's uh, he's waiting for someone to pick him up on the on the side of the road. So I would just like I would just like to see this man in a reliable vehicle where he can do what he loves doing with the passion that he has. Uh, I mean, it is absolutely amazing that someone who comes out of a state of persecution where millions of Christians has have been killed um, to come to the United States and then to have the freedom to do what he wants. It will be very easy for him to hate Muslims. Right? Because I've seen people come out of that state and they hate Muslims, but uh, he doesn't. Uh, I don't know anyone who loves Muslims more. He goes out and talks to Muslims in the mosque and um, occasionally someone will get aggressive. He has been uh, punched in the face and he will, walk, uh, he will walk back to wherever he's staying with blood coming out of his mouth and get down on his knees and pray for the Muslims who just beat him up. And that's the kind of guy we're dealing with. Uh, again, I'd love to see uh, to see him get uh, something reliable so he can continue doing this for as long as the Lord wills. So if you can contribute, please contribute. Now, this is just me personally. I like you know, giving out some, some perks whenever I can. Um, so I've got some perks. For fans of Islamicize Me out there, uh, we're giving away the props from the series. So if you want the 100% halal shirt, um, we, we, we're happy to give that out. Uh, if you want one of the, you know, the dagger we were using, you can give that out. One of the, the flags. Uh, we saved everything. I think Vocab wants to keep the backpack just because he still uses it on his show. But pretty much everything else is up for grabs if, if someone wants it. Um, also, I have copies of Nabil's books. Now, you can get copies of Nabil's books on your own. But mine are cooler because mine are autographed by Nabil. And so uh, I'm happy to give some of these away. I had Nabil sign uh, several copies of his books before he passed away. And how cool would it be to have an autographed copy of one of Nabil's books sent to you by D. Dog Dizzle himself for contributing to an awesome ministry? I think that would be pretty cool. So, so basically, uh, uh, you know, We'll give out some some perks to uh, the top the top donors, the the, the people who contribute. Uh, uh, we'll give out uh, you know prizes, and you, you can pick if you want if you want a book or if you want a prop, uh, if you want an autograph prop or autograph anything. Um, we'll give that out to, to the top donors, but we'll you, you know we also know it can be a sacrifice for someone who's only giving five dollars. So um, we'll also give out some random donations to people who donate. Uh, any amount, even a dollar. So uh, we'll give out uh, some prizes. We'll um, send those out after we've done the fundraiser. But uh, uh, please contribute, if you can, any amount to uh, to George to to get a vehicle here. Keep in mind, he didn't ask me to do this. Uh, I just I, I saw the need. I saw I, I've seen his his car broken down repeatedly. I've seen the things he drives in, and I've seen pile after pile after pile of Christian materials that need to get out there. And this man, more than any man I am aware of on the planet, will do everything he can to get these materials into the hands of Muslims. And uh, if we can get him a reliable vehicle, uh, something like a four-door truck, so that he can have uh, people in there and be hauling materials, um, I can guarantee you that no vehicle in the world, in the world, uh, will be used to bring more materials to more Muslims than this vehicle. So let's get this. And by the way, this is all a side note because if one of you out there says, hey, I have such a vehicle, I'll give it to him. That problem solved. I didn't need to make this entire video. Um, but uh, assuming that doesn't happen, please contribute. Um, whatever people uh, chip in uh, will go towards him getting something. And uh, again, uh, this vehicle will be used to bring Bibles, to bring tracks, to bring DVDs to Muslims across this country. Most people do not have that opportunity. Even people who do have the opportunity uh, don't often want to do it. Uh, there are Christians who do want to do it, and we need to help them as much as possible. So chip in if you can. Thank you.